Still fighting with Revit? Project brows are messy. Dimensions rounding too precisely. Sheets out of control? Don't worry. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you 10 simple tips that will save you hours and make you look like a Revit Pro, even if you just opened it for the first time. Before we dive in, like and subscribe so you never miss a tip. Let's go. So for this first tip, we're going to show you how to use view templates. View templates are all the different categories that you can adjust for a view, but controlled at a global range. All the elements that can be accessed in your visibility graphics overrides can actually be controlled with a view template and then applied to multiple views. So we can see this view has a ton of different elements that we don't actually want to see. The view is very cluttered and it's really hard to work in. So to add the view template, we scroll down in our properties dialog box, all the way down to identity data and view template, where it says none, click. And here you can see a bunch of view templates that BIM Depot has set up in our Revit template. Find the different view template that you would like to use, click OK, and you'll see instantly a lot of that clutter is now gone. The benefit of using the view template is that you can apply this across multiple views, make one change to that type of view, and then it'll show for all those different view types. The next tip that we're gonna look at is using view filters. So let's go back into our view template, go down to override filters and click edit. You'll notice that we have several of these set up already. So if we uncheck these, click okay, you'll notice that a lot of things show up here. So a good example of this is this view. It might be a working view, it's showing on one of our views that are placed in the sheet that are going to be issued with the construction documents. But we still want to show different types of sections. So these sections, the building sections, are actually meant to be shown on the sheet. If you go to the view template, scroll down to sections, uncheck this, you'll notice that all of our sections are now gone. If we go back, go to filters. So in this instance, we'll go to views, not on sheets. We'll click enable filter and make sure that visibility is unchecked. Click OK. You'll notice all those views that aren't placed on another sheet are now gone. You can make a view filter for any type of situation that you want. The third tip is going to be about duplicating views. Instead of creating a view from scratch, so let's say we wanted another view similar to this one, but with all of the tags highlighted. So we want a working view that show all of our tags highlighted. Instead of creating a new view from scratch, we will go to the view in the project browser, right click, duplicate view, where it says duplicate with detailing, we'll click, and then you'll see there's now a copy made of this. Now to use this as a working view, let's go in here, we'll turn all of our annotations, a very bright color, and now we can very easily see where all the tags are at and adjust as necessary. This next tip is really good for large project teams and working within a group. So as you can see, the floor plans working file is pretty chaotic. There's different naming conventions, different abbreviations, different all capitalization versus title case. Making sure that your team is using the same naming convention really helps when new people join or other people are looking for certain views. This can be an issue that is very typical throughout projects. The way that I like to do this is start with the level and then do an underscore and then name it with a description. Make sure that you're using all the same capitalization and spelling methods. Abbreviations can be confusing and mean different things to different people. Another good tip is to keep the syntax the same throughout. So in this case, we're doing the level first and then the description second. I like to be very strict with the different types of annotations that we're using. So in this case, there's a double dash, but the rest of the team is using an underscore. We just want to make sure that we're using the same annotation in every view so it doesn't get out of control. And always make sure that the capitalization is always consistent throughout. Now that we have all this renamed, it is super clear where we're located and then the topic that the view is dealing with. Even if a project team member leaves or is added, it's very, very clear where this is being taken from and what the topic is. You can take this methodology not only to view naming, but also sheet naming, view template naming. So you can tell BIM Depot does this. So we do our initial, the sheet series, and then what type of view is for, so plan, and then what type of plan. So this is done throughout all the different view templates, all the different view types. And you can even do this with your view filters. So again, having it very clear, BD helps it get sorted within the list. Elevations tells you what it's looking for. 
And then exterior tells you the exact type within that category. For the next tip, we're gonna talk about loading families into a project. A lot of times, certain families will be loaded into your project, but other times you'll have families that are not loaded within the template and that you'll need to pull for the specific project. So in this case, we'll look for a door. So say if we wanted this double door in the project, you can simply copy it, go back to your view, find the location that you would like to place it, and now you have this door within the project. The benefit of this is that you can see all the different types that you have available to you, and you don't have to searching through a giant list through your file explorer. This is our door depot available on our website at bimdepot.com. We do this for all of our family categories, and it makes it very easy to find what you're looking for. For this next tip, we're gonna show you how to copy monitor certain elements from linked models. In the Collaborate tab, go to Copy Monitor, select link, click on the link that you want to copy monitor from. A good way to work when you have multiple consultants and multiple linked models is to use Copy Monitor. Copy Monitor allows you to copy particular elements, so in this case, like a structural grid from a linked model. And if it gets changed in a link model, it will update in your model. So a good use case for this when the structural engineer sets certain grid lines, you will copy monitor them. And when you get a link update, you'll get a message that says the grid has changed and it allows you to automatically update that grid line with the change that's happened in the structural model. After that, we'll go up here to copy. You'll select all the grid lines that you want copied into your project. Click the check mark to finish. And now you'll see that we have all those grid lines now native within this project space. This is really useful if you want to be able to manipulate that particular element. So these grid lines in each view. So now you can see we can actually modify this. Whereas if we clicked on the link, you can't modify. There's a lot of different ways you can hide the existing grids. But the best way that I found to do this is to go to manage, manage links, go to the linked model, manage work sets, and then hide the work set that you no longer want to see. So in this case, levels and grids, we have it open. We'll turn that to closed, reload, click OK. And now you see that we only have the grids that we've now copy monitored. Now, if we simulate the structural engineer changing the grid dimensions, we can go into manage links, reload, now you'll notice you get this error warning that says instance of link needs coordination review. Then go to coordination review, select links. You'll notice it tells you now that the grid is moved. Under action, click modify grid four, click OK. And you'll now notice that our grid line has changed by one foot, the same exact distance that it was changed in the link structural model. This same workflow can be used for your levels or any other element within Revit that you wanna make sure is coordinated through linked models. For tip number seven, we're gonna show you how to use Revit's temporary hide isolate tool. This is a topic we covered in a full length video that can be found linked in the description. Down here at the little glasses icon, click on it and you'll notice that isolate category, hide category, isolate element and hide element are all shown down here grayed out. If you'd like to apply this, Let's say if we are working on all the stairs and that's the only thing that we wanted to see, we would click on the stairs, glasses, isolate category, and then now you'll see only the stairs are showing in the project. This is only temporary and can easily be undone by clicking reset temporary height isolate. This can also be done just for a singular element by clicking isolate element. Now, if you wanted to do the opposite, so let's say we were working on the walls around this stair but the stairs are visually getting into the way. Let's select all the stair elements, click hide element. And now we can clearly see the floor cut out and the walls around this without being distracted by the stairs. This tool is really helpful for everyday workflows and can be used for a variety of different issues and can be applied to any element within Revit. For this next tip, we're gonna talk about dimensional rounding. So by default, the most precise that Revit will be with the dimension is a fraction one over 256. This is not a common construction rounding, and it's an issue when you send numbers like this to contractors, they just won't understand it and cannot be that precise. So the root issue of this can be found in the Manage tab. Go to Project Units, and then go to Length, 
and you can see the project is defaulted to round to the nearest 1 over 256. Let's say this is an existing building with a lot of wonky dimensions. We'll want a lot of tolerance, so we'll switch it to 1 quarter of an inch. Click OK. Notice that our dimensions are now rounding to the nearest quarter inch. By default, if there are no fractional inches, it just hides it. Let's say in some locations we wanted the dimensions to have this level of precision, but in other cases we didn't. You can click on Edit Type within Dimension, scroll down to Primary Units, Unit Format. Right here where it says Use Project Settings, you can uncheck this. You can modify it specifically for this dimension string type. You'll see within the BIM Depot Revit template, we have loads of these already set up. So there's certain rounding. We have dimension strings set up to only show inches. We have fixed leader lengths, which is nice for instances where leader lines are very long and actually become distracting in the view. For tip number nine, we're going to show you some of the Revit selection tools. It's very common to click on something and then accidentally drag it. You can see I didn't mean to click on this handrail but I accidentally did, and when my cursor moved, it actually moved the handrail itself. To prevent this from happening, you can go down in the bottom right corner of the screen, click the button that says Drag Elements on Selection. Now you'll notice that when I do that, it just starts to create a selection box, and it doesn't actually drag. If you did intentionally want to drag it, you can click on it first, drag it, and then it still functions the way that you want it to. The next topic that we're gonna talk about is Revit templates. Revit templates allow you to load everything that you want in your baseline project and not have to recreate the wheel every time you start a new project. Go ahead and click Start New Model, Browse, find your Revit template, click Open, Okay, now you'll see that our project is set up the way that we want it. You can preload this with all your typical views Typical sheets, firm graphic standards, typical details, schedules, and so much more. You can access BIM Depot's Revit template on our website, bim-depot.com. Using the BIM Depot Revit template will save you hundreds of hours, and it was crafted by practicing architects that are experts within Revit. So to recap, we looked at view templates, view filters, duplicate views, naming conventions, family libraries, copy monitor from linked models, temporary height isolate, dimensional rounding, Revit selection tools, and Revit templates for new projects. If you start using even half of these tips, your Revit life is going to get so much easier and your team is going to work so much faster. We've built ready to use templates and beginner friendly family packs over at bin-depot.com. So whether you're an expert or beginner at Revit, you don't have to start from scratch. Follow the link in the description to learn more. Hit like if you learned something, subscribe for more Revit tips every week, and turn on notifications so you never miss a video.